Dude, do you have a flat tire or a slow leak on your vehicle? Well, on today's very special episode, I'm going to show you the industry standards best practice for puncture repair doing umbrella patch repairs. Stay tuned. All right, so first up, what is an umbrella patch repair? Well, this is an umbrella patch. And the beauty about this guy is it takes your normal plug repair, which is only really a temporary fix. And um, look for a future video from me from on that one. And it mixes this with a good patch repair to come with the ultimate patch plug repair. And it looks like an umbrella, so that's why they nicknamed it umbrella patch. You're gonna have to figure out whether this puncture repair is gonna be even safe to do so. So if there's any kind of repair that's needed to be done in the sidewall, that's a no-no. You don't fix that. That's just asking to have that blow out later in life. And for me, rule of thumb, from here, an inch in on the tread, I don't actually fix either. If it gets too close to that sidewall, you're going to have to drill in there and you can start damaging that sidewall and cause a blowout later. So if you've got it back in here, then it's probably a good candidate for a repair. Now the other thing you want to think about is how old's this tire and is there age cracks and this thing's ready to blow up on you anyway and it really at that point it's smarter to get yourself a new tire rather than do a plug repair. If you have a major flat tire it's probably going to be really obvious you're going to have a nail or a screw sticking out and um, pretty easy to find you may even be able to put air back into it and just listen for the little air whistling sound you run your hand along the tire and you'll actually feel that little burst of air and then you can pinpoint where that puncture is. You get yourself some soapy water, uh, mostly water, just a little bit of dish soap is all you need. Get a spray bottle and uh, just start spraying it. All right, so really common places for these to leak is between the tire and the rim. Sometimes the paint starts to lift up a bit and that gives it a little pathway for the air to escape or there's some previous damage to the rim, etc. Uh, so you look around here. Another really common spot is when these valve stems are really old, they start to go. So you can give it a little flex back and forth and look for soapy bubbles uh, that start to appear. And then right inside on that valve core, if it's not seated or there was a, maybe a missing dust cap at one point, some dirt's got in and you got a slow leak there. You can take your soapy water and just kind of spray it all over the tread. Give it a couple minutes and take a look for those little soapy bubbles to appear. If you still can't find the leak while it's on the vehicle, the next best step is to take it off the vehicle. And if you're at home, you basically take a, a large sink or a bathtub, fill it about half full with water and submerge the tire with some air pressure in it. And um, take a look for teeny to tiny bubbles and um, you'll find the leak that way. So let's say you found the leak or maybe you haven't and you need to put this into a bathtub to check for it. Uh, either way, the wheel's got to come off. So safety glasses, air impact gun, the right size socket, and you're good to go. Make sure this thing's going lefty-loosey. Yeah, we're good. Go in a star pattern so we're not warping the rotor or anything underneath. Sometimes you don't have something stuck in the tire. It's already been punctured and it's come out and you got a teeny, teeny, tiny leak. And what it'll look like is that all the soapy bubbles have popped, but about 15, 20 minutes in, you will see a little collection, almost like a little bush of little bubbles. And there's your tiny little puncture leak. And in some cases you've got a really stubborn tire where you can't find that leak no matter what. And usually they're the very, very, very slow leaks. So there's a little pinhole leak somewhere. And um, what you do is you fill up your bathtub half full or some large Rubbermaid tote and you put the normal pressure into the tire, submerge it, and slowly take a look for little bubbles. And we are looking for tiny, tiny little stream strings of bubbles that come out from the tire, and that'll help you find your leak. All right, once you find your puncture, it's a really good idea to take a piece of chalk or a tire marking crayon and just give it a little circle because once you remove that, uh, you may actually lose where it goes because the hole can be really quite tiny. All right, in order to do the umbrella patch repair, we do have to take the tire off of the rim, so go ahead and do that now. And if you don't know how to do that, you can always look at my video on how to use the basic tire changer to do it. All right, the next piece of equipment that I'm gonna show you how to use is called a tire spreader. And what it does is it grabs the sidewalls of the tire and spreads it apart so that you can get in there with tools and um, do the job a lot easier. Now you don't need it, but like I said, it does make the job easier. Now this tire spreader does have rollers down here, so if you undo the arm, you can actually position 
position this tire wherever you'd like and right now I want to have that puncture pointing to the front. Once you've found the puncture, it's a good idea to mark it so you don't lose track of it. And then we got to remove that thing out of there. So usually you got yourself a pair of pliers, or in this case, I'm going to use a screwdriver because I'm the one that made this leak so that I can show you how to fix this stuff. So once you've taken that little nail or screw out of the, the tire, you're going to have a super tiny hole that pretty much closes up on itself. And there's no way you're going to get the stem of this umbrella patch into there. So you need to open it up. So what you need is something called a tapered drill bit. And I will put a list of all the parts that I used during this repair um, down in the description below so that you can buy these and have them for you yourself. So it's tapered, it's got a little bit of, little point here to get it into the hole a little easier and then it widens out so that lets you open it up. Now, you don't wanna go too big but you do want it a little bigger so that this will fit in there. Okay, now the next part of the repair, it's actually easier if I get that hole somewhere down here near the base, still so I can get that stem of the umbrella patch past the, the bracket here, but um, so that I can work on the inside without working on the side of the tire. The next step in this procedure is prepping the surface and getting rid of some things that are on the top of the surface that are gonna give us issues later. So the first one is mold release. So when they make these tires in a factory, they spray the mold down with a mold release that helps the tire release and, and come off easy. And so that's gonna be on there and that's gonna come off. And then the other thing is there's an inner liner here and um, that's gonna clog up the buffing cone that we're gonna use in a second. So to help us with that, we've got a tire scraper that we're going to use to scrape that surface and to help relieve and bring up that stuff that we want off we're going to use some liquid tire buffer and cleaner don't need too much just spray the area a bit and we're going to scrape and uh, when you do this you have to do the repair a little bit bigger than the umbrella patch um, otherwise you're not going to clean all of it off So this is the stuff that we have to remove so that it doesn't clog up the next tool, which is our buffing cone. This is called a buffing cone. It's essentially a grinding pad and you can put it in anything that spins. So I've got it in a little die grinder here. You can put it in a drill. And we're gonna use this to scuff up the surface a little bit bigger than the diameter of the patch. And uh, what we're trying to do is get through the inner liner that they have here that helps trap air inside the tire and get to the raw rubber so that the vulcanizing cement has a decent chance of sticking. The other thing I'm trying to do here is there's often these little rubber ribs. There's like raised up little lips in here. I'm gonna knock those down first because often those little ridges prevent that patch from sealing. So I usually knock down the ribs first and then I clean up the whole area. Really important, remember, we're not hogging through the tire. We just wanna scuff up the surface and get through the top inner liner, and knock down those little ridges that are gonna prevent this from sealing. The next step in the process is you have to get all the little grindings that you just made out of the tire. Now, you'd think you could kind of just shake it side to side and get all of it out. It, the way the shape of the tire is designed, it just doesn't come out of there. So the easiest and best way, get yourself a vacuum cleaner and take a couple seconds and vacuum it all out. Next step up is we need our heavy duty vulcanizing cement. Don't just use regular rubber cement. This stuff's vulcanizing, which means it interacts with the original rubber and softens and bonds with it a lot better. So the trick with this stuff is you put it down on the patch. Put it over the area where you're gonna put the patch. A little wider, that's fine. mistake a lot of people do is they immediately put the tire patch and what that does is it doesn't get air in there to dry it 
and make it sticky and tacky so the, the patch slides around and it, you take forever trying to get it to done. So the best thing to do now is give it a couple minutes, let it kind of gas off. You can waft it or get a shop air and blow it a little bit, uh, but give it a little bit of time until it feels sticky or tacky. And rather than wait, I'm gonna talk about the parts. So you need to get yourself a pair of pliers so that you can grab on the, the wire stem here from the outside of the tire and that's going to let you pull the plug down against the tire. Now the other thing you need to get is a stitching tool. It basically looks like a little pizza cutting wheel with little serrations on it. And this is gonna let you help smooth out and make sure that that patch, part of the umbrella patch, is sticking to the tire rather than you using your fingers and it gets sticky and it kind of helps lift up the patch as you're doing it. Okay, now on these umbrella patches, you've got a little protective piece, kind of like a sticker backing pad. So you want to pick that off and that just keeps the surface clean until it's ready to be used. It's not sticky by itself, it's just to help keep it clean. And then what you do is you take this little wire end, put it through the hole that you made, take your pliers, grab that wire stem, and pull it down into the tire. Now the proper pressure of how hard you're pulling down there should be a little dimple created right in the center as you're pulling on it. Don't pull any harder than that, otherwise you'll just bust it off. Now, as you're holding that pressure, take your stitching tool and start to go over it. Go all the way from one side to the other. And then go 90 degrees and do it that way. And all you're doing is you're helping this patch stick right down and sit flush all the way around from one edge to the other. And you just keep doing this for a minute or so. And you'll know you'll be done because the edges will be stuck down completely. There's no little lifts anywhere. Once you've done that, the next step is putting on a coating of this inner liner sealer. So remember, we took the buffing cone and we scratched through this inner liner surface. That inner liner surface stops microscopic molecules of air from escaping the tire, but we just ground through it. So we have to put a coating over that and that's the stuff here, the inner liner sealer. So you don't need tons of it, but you do need to make sure you cover the entire area and anywhere you ground to. So if you ground a little bit past the patch, then you should be putting that inner liner sealer past and over top of whatever you ground over. So the next step is basically just cutting off this part here and we want to cut it off so that the end of this is now flush with the tread on the tire and you can simply cut it off with a pair of diagonal side cutters or using a box cutter. And once you've clipped that end off the tire repair is done and at this point this has to go back on the rim. Once you got your tire back on your rim and balanced, don't forget that, you got to balance these puppies. Uh, time to put them on and uh, remember your lug nuts here the lug nut has a little chamfer or an angle on one side that has to go towards the rim if you put it on the other way with a flat spot that doesn't center the rim where it's supposed to be so make sure that angle goes towards the wheel and if you don't want to ever cross thread anything put everything on by hand to start Remember, when you tighten these up, you can't just kind of hand tighten them and hope they stay on. Uh, otherwise, this wheel comes off later. So what you have to do is get a torque wrench and set the torque wrench to the proper torque spec for your vehicle. Now, you can find that vehicle in something like Mitchell or All Data online. Uh, you can maybe see it in your owner's manual. And if you can't find it, here's a little trick that's almost pretty accurate where it should be, is I treat each lug nut as 20 foot-pounds of tightness. And then all you do is you add how many you have and add them up. So 20, 40, 60, 80. So I'm gonna set my torque wrench to 80 foot-pounds for this wheel. 
Now the way you use this torque wrench is on the end here is a lock unlock, so you pull it back to unlock it. And when you turn this black handle, you'll notice that there is some marks on here. So you find where it says foot pounds, and you turn this handle until the edge of this black handle lines up with the markings that you want. So in this case, I want 80. And then I spin it until the zero lines up and the, the zero lines up with the center line and the edge ends up with the line that says 80 foot-pounds. Then last thing is you lock it. I've got a rear wheel here that normally would start spinning on me when I go to tighten it up. However, I've got the parking brake, the emergency parking brake on, and that only acts on the rear wheels. So in this case, this wheel is not going to move and I'll be able to do what I need to. Um, however, if you're having this problem and the wheels are spinning, uh, you can try holding the wheel as you're torquing it down, or if you have a buddy, you can get them to hold the brake for you inside the vehicle, and um, that'll stop those from moving. When you're tightening these lug nuts, make sure that you tighten in a star pattern or a cross pattern so that you are not tightening them all in a circular pattern. If you do that, there's a chance that you can warp the brake components underneath, so don't do that. When you go to use this torque wrench, and you've set it to the proper torque spec, when you're tightening it, when you get to the proper torque, you're going to feel and hear one click. And that's telling you that you've reached the torque and you're good to go. Now, what screws people up, especially when they're starting out and learning this stuff, is when you tighten it and you hear that clunk, when you let go of it, you will also hear one other clunk. Now, so some people, when they're learning and they see someone do that, that they think they have to tighten until they hear two clicks. It's not how it is. One click, back off, you're done. Now, in my shop, I don't let guys use impact guns to tighten these up because they are still learning and they'll go and next thing you know, I've got some studs to repair. So, in our shop, we put them in by hand and the impact gun is only for removal. All right, listen for the one click. One click. Now I'm going to back it off and you're going to hear that second click. But you're only waiting for the one click and then you stop. Cross pattern. One click. Now once you've gone around and done all of them, I teach people to go around again now in a circular pattern so that you don't miss one. And really, they should all be tight and so it should just go and click without actually kind of moving that socket. And if it does that, then you know they were tight and you just double checked them. Sometimes the very first one you tightened will be a little bit loose and that's just because it was the first one in all that sequence that was done. All right, and don't forget your hubcaps. Now, most hubcaps, at this point, they just go on. What you do is you find the little hole here in the side, that's for your valve stem. So you find your valve stem, put that notch, line it up with the valve stem. And then you can use a rubber mallet, but really just use the soft kind of cushy part and should just need A couple taps to keep that in. Now, some of these hubcaps are actually trapped hubcaps, which means there would be holes here, and it's designed for you to put the lug nuts through the hubcap and tighten up the wheel that way. So, take a look at that before you start tightening up your wheels, otherwise you're going to have to take them all off and put them back on. Now, when you've got a vehicle up off the ground and you are tightening wheels back on, it is really important to make sure that the back of the wheel rim is sitting flush against the wheel hub where the studs are sticking out. Here's what can happen if you don't. Here's your hub, here's your wheel, and the wheel's kind of hanging crooked, okay? And you haven't tightened it so that it's come together and it's flush. And so it's hanging like this, and as you lower the car down onto the ground and the tire touches, it might actually go out like this and leave a little bit of a gap. Now, when you go to tighten and torque up all those lug nuts to specification, it does tighten up, but what's happening is the tire flexes instead of it actually coming together and being flush. And your torque wrench will click and the whole deal will look like you did the job great. However, as soon as that vehicle starts to roll, that looseness will come out 
and um, often that's what happens when these wheels are coming off. Somebody hasn't fully torqued them up and made sure that they are flush. Now, if you want, you can tighten them up kind of as, as tight as you can with a torque wrench so that the back is flush. Then you can lower the vehicle down on the ground just until the tires touch the ground. That will prevent the wheels from rolling and then you can final torque them down and um, you'll be good then. All right, there's a wrap on another video from Way of the Wrench and on how to become a gearhead. This time on how to do an umbrella patch repair for a flat tire. If you have any questions about what I did in the video, just put them down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. I will also put a list of all the supplies and equipment and tools down in the description uh, for everything that I used in order to do this flat tire repair. And on that way you guys can buy this stuff and have it at your home garage. And if you'd like any behind the scenes information, follow us on Instagram and uh, don't forget to hit that subscribe button on the way out. Peace.